Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video we are going to see about gestational diabetes mellitus or GDM. This is a concise presentation for medical students. GDM is defined as carbohydrate intolerance of varying severity with onset or first recognition during pregnancy. Now let us see about the diagnostic criteria of GDM. WHO recommends 75 gram glucose load for diagnosing GDM. If the 2 hour venous glucose is less than 140 milligram per deciliter, the patient is normal. If the 2 hour venous glucose is between 140 to 199 milligram per deciliter, the patient has impaired glucose tolerance. And if the 2 hour venous glucose is greater than or equal to 200 milligram per deciliter, the patient is suffering from gestational diabetes mellitus. Now let us see about the screening for gestational diabetes mellitus. Glucose challenge test can be done as a screening method. In this, we give 50 gram oral glucose to the patient irrespective of last meal. If the 1 hour glucose is greater than or equal to 140 milligram per deciliter, it indicates gestational diabetes mellitus and it should be confirmed by a 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test. Nowadays, GCT or glucose challenge test is not done in most of the places. Now let us see about oral glucose tolerance test. IAD PSG recommends 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test. In this, we give 75 gram of oral glucose after overnight fasting. We have to measure fasting blood glucose values and blood glucose values at 1 hour and 2 hours. The criteria for diagnosis is at least one value should be abnormal. The cutoffs include fasting blood glucose greater than or equal to 92, 1 hour blood glucose greater than or equal to 180, and 2 hour blood glucose greater than or equal to 153. This is the criteria that is followed in most places in India. Now let us see about ACOG guidelines. ACOG recommends 100 gram oral glucose tolerance test. In this, we give 100 gram of oral glucose to patients after overnight fasting and we measure blood glucose in fasting state after 1 hour, 2 hours and 3 hours. The criteria for diagnosis is 2 or more values should be abnormal. The cutoffs include greater than or equal to 95 milligram per deciliter for fasting glucose, 1 hour glucose greater than or equal to 180 milligram per deciliter. 2 hour glucose greater than or equal to 155 and 3 hour glucose greater than or equal to 140 mg per deciliter. Now let us see about the risk factors for developing gestational diabetes mellitus. Glycosuria, macrosomia or polyhydramnios, previous gestational diabetes mellitus, previous macrosomic baby or stillbirth, body mass index greater than 30, family history of diabetes mellitus, Indian ethnicity are the various risk factors for developing gestational diabetes mellitus. Gestational diabetes mellitus is best diagnosed in second trimester. This is because glucose tolerance worsens with advancing age. So we do 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test in the second trimester to diagnose gestational diabetes mellitus. Now let us see about the clinical features of gestational diabetes mellitus. GDM has no specific clinical features. It is diagnosed after screening. Patients with GDM have an increased risk of macrosomia and preeclampsia. Now let us see about the management of GDM. The initial management is dietary. We have to reduce the fat and carbohydrate and increase fiber in the diet of patients with GDM. If the postprandial blood glucose is above 135 mg per deciliter, or if the fasting blood glucose is above 100 mg per deciliter, we must add insulin along with dietary modifications. We have to do USG at 28, 32 and 36 weeks to look for macrosomia and polyhydramnios. This is useful to decide the timing and mode of delivery. We have to do regular screening for preeclampsia. This is because patients with GDM have an increased risk of developing preeclampsia. Screening is done by regular blood pressure monitoring and urine analysis. Postnatally, we must do a glucose tolerance test at 6 weeks to exclude diabetes mellitus. Now let us see about the 
prognosis of patients with gestational diabetes mellitus. Postnatally, patients who suffered from gestational diabetes mellitus during pregnancy have an increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes mellitus. So, they should be advised weight control, exercise and regular blood glucose monitoring postnatally. They are at increased risk of developing gestational diabetes mellitus again in subsequent pregnancies. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comment section. For more such videos, please check out my playlists. Thank you.